Hey there, how's it going? Didn't see you there. Today, we're gonna to talk about lazy variables in Swift. So before we dive into coding, let's take a look at lazy variables. In order to do that, let's have a quick refresher on variables. Say we've got this variable here, which is a name of the type string, and its value has hello. When you declare that variable, it will actually store that in memory. And it will also take a bit of time to load that up into memory. And it's not usually not noticeable, however, it is there. Now let's say we declare another variable called age of the type integer, which value is 2. This takes up even more memory. And now we have a player's array with three strings in, and that takes up even more memory and it takes a bit of time to set that up. Now, of course, there is a lot of memory for most of the coding you would do. I say that because there are some applications where you will run out and you will have to manage it most of the time for basic, simple apps you want. So it looks more, something more like this. So why should we use a lazy variable? Well, let's just say this players here, instead of having three players, we had one million players. Now, we might have enough memory for that. However, to load up a million players into memory might take 10 seconds. And say your app's loading, in addition to loading up the pl players into memory, the one million players, it will need to lay out your view controller, set the UI, and do any other work it needs to do. Now this takes up quite a lot of time and you might not need to access the one million play straight away. This is where a lazy variable comes into play. The lazy way. So say we've got a name here called John. If we declare that as a lazy variable in this format, it doesn't actually load it into memory or take any time to set that up. What happens is, if we call it later on, such as in a print statement, print lazy name, that's when the variable will be initialized, loaded into memory, and then used. Now that will only happen the first time you use that variable, any subsequent uses, and it will already be in memory. So this saves memory and time. So remember the example of loading one million player records? If you've done that, it wouldn't slow down the loading of your app until it was actually used. So just before we get to coding, a quick note about the lazy variable is that it needs to be strongly typed in that we need to define its type such as string, integer, and so on. We can't leave it typeless and let Swift guess what it is. And it needs to be declared in the following format here, which looks much like a function in Swift. So let's get into coding it and I'll show you actually working in some code and we'll run through it. All right, so I've just created a new single view application in Xcode and went straight to the view controller. So let's take a look at coding lazy variables. So first of all, we're gonna create a variable called name and we're going to set it as Bobby, just a normal variable as a comparison to the lazy variables. Next up, we're gonna create a lazy variable, lazy var, and I'm gonna call it lazy name. I'm gonna make it of the type string, equals curly braces, and we'll do return John. And finally, we need to do these curly brackets at the end also. So if down here I'll go print name and print lazy name. Let's run it and make sure that we get Bobby printing as our name variable and John printing as our lazy name for the output. And then I'll show you something cool with lazy variables and show you how it actually works inspecting it using a debugger. All right, we can see in the console here, we've got Bobby and John printed out, which is correct. 
So let's take a look at another cool thing using lazy variables. If we declare a new age variable called age as an int, which is optional because we're not going to set it until later. So in view did load, we're going to set age to be 22 years old. Now say we want a variable that introduces someone based on their age, but we don't know the age yet until we set it in view did load. So how could we set that in a variable up here? You're probably guessing lazy var, which is correct. So if we create a lazy var, lazy age intro of a type string equals curly brackets, then we do return, the age is slash curvy bracket self dot age exclamation mark curvy bracket quotation marks do the curvy brackets at the end then if we go print lazy age intro it's going to print out to the console the age is 22 and that works because this age is an optional we set it in view did load and this lazy age intro doesn't actually get set up until we print it out here so we can see here, it prints out to the console, the age is 22. So finally, to show you that it's actually working, let's create a breakpoint just above print name by clicking on the left side here. Let's run our app and step through the code. Okay, so we can see our breakpoint stopped here right before print name. And we can see a whole bunch of debugging options. So the one we're interested in is down the bottom, you should see this self. If we expand that out, this is what we're interested in here. So we can see the name variable here has been set, which is Bobby. The age variable is set, which is 22. However, we can see we have this lazy name dot storage is nil of a type string and lazy age intro dot storage is nil of a type string. And we can see up in here in our code, lazy name is John and lazy age intro will be the age is and it'll be 22 in our case. So those variables, as mentioned, aren't set up yet and actually living in storage. And this code hasn't run to set that here. So if we step through this code by clicking on this button here, step over. We can see Bobby gets printed out to the console. These are still aren't set. So when we click on step over now, it's going to run this print lazy name. So if we click on that, you can see here, prints out John to the console. And all of a sudden here, our lazy name dot storage is now storing John. So that's in our memory now that we've used it. And recall, once you use it once, it will always be in your memory afterwards. So if we repeat that again, the lazy age intro dot storage is set to the age is 22 and printed out to the console. So that's how lazy variables work. So just a quick summary, lazy variables allow you to set variables without loading them into memory straight away. The advantages of this are obviously you're not using as much memory. And one of the big advantages is if you have variables that require a lot of setup, such as a players array containing a million names or setting up a database, that might take 10 seconds. And if you set that up straight away while your view control is loading, while your app's loading and everything else is happening, that will be a bad experience for the user. So it's better to use sometimes a bit later in the app when you don't need to process so many things at once. So you can download the source code for this tutorial below. 